I've always been interested in the paranormal and witnessed and experienced some events that I can't explain to this day. But I'm a very rational person, so I've always brushed it off, while keeping an open mind, of course. But one of those experiences left me with no doubt. My current girlfriend used to work at a cafe bakery in an old building in Bordeaux. She used to close at night alone because she was the store manager and stayed after the crew was done to count the register, do all the paperwork, etc. The bakery was made of the storefront, the kitchen in the back, and the office in the back as well. There's also a second floor, which is only storage and the changing rooms for the staff. The building isn't shared. It was only the cafe slash bakery. She told me she felt uneasy as soon as her first shift there. Most nights, she'd hear running footsteps upstairs, the TVs in the sitting area for the customers turning on and off randomly, and the front door's doorbell ringing while the door was not moving. All that when she was alone. Another co-worker she was close with shared the same experiences with her. I believed her because she has a history of paranormal encounters and is very serious about that stuff, but I wasn't convinced until I witnessed it. I also worked in the food industry, so I was rarely off when she was working too. One Sunday, I was off, so I decided to come pick her up and spend the last 30 to 45 minutes of her workday. She usually spends alone with her this time. She gave me a tour of the place, and it did feel uneasy. But nothing significant happened, except for some random rattling noises upstairs. Until I mentioned how quiet her ghost of the bakery was. She was counting the register in the office in the back of the store. I was leaning against the wall in the corridor leading to the office. My back turned away from the storefront. To my right, there was a dishwashing room. There was no door to this room, just an opening in the corridor. To better visualize, I was facing towards the office watching my girlfriend, turning my back to the storefront, leaning against the wall, but seeing the dishwashing room in my peripheral vision. Jokingly, I tell her, I'm glad your ghost decided to leave us alone tonight. Not one second after I finish my sentence, the pile of glasses and dishes in the dishwashing room goes flying. I saw the whole room clearly in my side vision, and there was no one or nothing that could have done that. There was a pile of glasses stacked up in a pyramid, and they flew as if someone ran their hand through the base. It wasn't one glass tipping and bringing down the pyramid. It was legit pushed off. She just told me, I told you, he's always there, since she's used to stuff like this happening. She was almost done, so we stayed less than 10 minutes in there, but I could feel a different level of oppression and uneasiness for the whole time. This one sticks with me because there's no rational explanation. I saw the dishes go flying around and it was a direct response to my joke. I live in South India, I still do, and this one gives me nightmares. In India, as you may know, were highly superstitious and religious. It was when I was seven or eight years old that my dad moved into a new rented home. My relatives were urging my dad to buy it, but my mom was reluctant, hence we never bought it, and I'm so grateful for that. I was a kid, and I didn't know very much about paranormal stuff. I faintly remember that we used to hang up a rectangular mirror in our hall, and one night, while I was passing that mirror, I saw my sister coming behind me in the mirror. She was just three years old or so at the time, and I wanted to lift her up. So I turned back and was so excited to lift her when I noticed she wasn't there. I ran back to mom in the kitchen and asked her where my sister was. She was like, I put her to bed. I persisted that she woke up, so she took me to our bedroom since her and I use the same room, and she was sleeping as my mom said. Later one night, I don't remember the date precisely, my dad had gone to work and it was 7 p.m. My mom was frying fish and I was having my dinner while watching Tom and Jerry when we sensed a burning smell coming out of the bedroom. My sister was with me at that time, so mom rushed out to see and I followed behind. We noticed that our washing machine caught fire 
We had kept our washing machine in that bathroom, as it was huge and spacious. See, a few of you may think it's a machine error, or some problem with the electricity. I remember my mom screaming at the brand manager of the washing machine, saying that there was no electricity problem. So we got it checked too, and the servicemen told us that there was nothing wrong with the washing machine, and it anonymously caught fire. So back to the story. The machine caught fire, and it blasted. We ran out of the house, and fire engines and ambulances started to pull up, with a number of neighbors standing outside. Thankfully, with the grace of God, we got out safe. After a few years since we moved to a new apartment, my mom was telling a very close neighbor about how our previous home caught fire, and I was curious to listen, so I sat beside her as she told her experience. Four or five days before the washing machine caught fire, my mom had brought some groceries and stocked it in the refrigerator. The next day, all the lemons and eggs, specifically, had rotten, and my mom had an ominous feeling about it. And then our house caught fire. Now, traveling back to when we recently moved into the house, my mom used to put incense sticks at the nook of the house. As you see, it wards out the evil spirits and stuff. We had stairs, which we would take to the rooftop, and my mom never goes up to put incense sticks there after the sun sets, because one day, it literally gave her the creeps while she went to place it there, and she came running back down. After we shifted, my dad used to go out of the country for businesses, so we were alone. At that time, mom would pray to God at night in the prayer room we had in our home. When she prayed, She'd hear someone walking or running in the rooftop, or sometimes a sense or feeling that someone walked or ran past the prayer room. We never felt happy in that house. We'd always find glass shattered at the backside of the home and had to call people to clear it out. In the front of the house, we used to have these drumstick trees that belonged to a neighbor of ours. And since I told you we're superstitious, Tis said that a house isn't supposed to have drumsticks, as it is said that creatures of the dark used to reside there. This one applies for tamarind trees as well, and Mum thought that'd be a reason as well. We tried to talk about the history of the house to the owner, and the owner suspiciously tried to talk it away or change to other subjects. We also had a small temple adjacent to our home which held a goddess Durga idol, which my mom says had protected us until the last minutes we left the house. That Durga idol was stolen a week prior to the house fire. We lived in that house for a year or so, and mom states that it was the goddess who protected us and tried to warn us of that house. Now, I have heard that the house has now been renovated into an apartment. I hope the people residing there are all right. We never took a single belonging of ours from that house, as most of it was burnt away, including our picture frames, and we had to burn the remnants that we could collect. It still gave me creeps while writing this story. My husband worked as a government contractor for a company that sends him all over the world. For a few years, my daughter and I would travel with him he was usually gone for months at a time. One of his business trips was to Bremerton, Washington. We were put into an apartment called Olympic Village. It was rented out to companies like his. They were okay, fully furnished, better than a hotel, especially for that length of time that we usually stayed. The apartment we had was on the ground floor. It was decorated well, and the furniture wasn't too worn. Nothing seemed or felt weird. I usually can read vibes of places where I go. I'm not sure how to explain it. I don't think I'm psychic, just maybe in tune with my surroundings. Things seemed pretty normal for the first few days. I spent most days there since I didn't have a car, just playing my video games or watching TV. One night, my husband came home to the apartment and I had dinner ready and set out. We all sat down at the table to eat having the normal conversations people do, like how was work type stuff, when all of a sudden, I felt something touch my thigh. I didn't respond to it because I wasn't sure exactly what had just happened, 
so I continued eating. A few moments later, it happened again. It felt familiar, like my old 10-pound chihuahua was begging for food. I looked down, thinking I would see a dog looking up at me, but there wasn't anything there. My instinct had been to move him down with my hand, to get him to stop begging. I laughed out loud and said to my husband, I keep feeling like there's a dog here. I felt something jump at my leg, and I almost pushed it down. My husband said, that's weird, because I feel like there's one here too. He told me he was on his way to the bathroom around 3 a.m. As soon as he walked out and turned to walk down the hall, he saw a small shadow sitting there, still, just looking at him. He jumped back, startled, and it disappeared. I was in shock because I didn't expect anyone to feel the same thing. It seemed weird. I'm very connected to animals. I've always been, my whole life. Dogs and I seem to have a very deep bond, almost on a spiritual level. About a week later, it was a weekend, and my husband and I were watching TV. We were both on our own couch. Mine was a large sofa, so I was stretched out under a blanket. Almost, without any thinking, I went to readjust my position. In the moment, I thought my dog was laying at the crease of the back of my knee, where my legs bent. I was being careful to not squash him or move him because I felt a weight on the blanket. I looked and nothing was there. I felt weird. I told my husband what had happened. Everything was normal for a while after that. I hadn't felt the dog since the couch. One night, I woke up and had to go to the bathroom. I'm night blind and wear glasses, but I decided to just go without putting them on. The bathroom had a window and a light from outside shined through with just enough light that I could see once I got close and around the corner. So I headed down the hall, sliding my hand slowly across the wall so I could feel where to go. I was looking straight ahead, but it was pitch black. I came to the corner, with my hand still tracing the side, and I see something. It was darker than the dark hall, but the darkness blocked the light from the window. The light traced a body. Its height brought my head to look instinctively up, towards where a face would be. I froze in terror, gasped, and jumped back, scared because I thought it was a real person. Where the head would be, it looked like he was wearing a top hat. This dark figure seemed to be close to six foot five or taller. Once I realized it wasn't human, I quickly rushed past it to turn on the bathroom light. With the light on, I then saw that nothing was there. Years later, I brought this up to my daughter. I didn't want to tell her before because she was still little, and she shared with me that she's also seen a man there who would stand in the corner with a big hat and a dog at his feet.